Hello everyone and welcome to today's Australian Digital Health Agency webinar. We are pleased to welcome our presenters for today, Vandana Chandnani and Kate Ellis. This webinar is live and interactive. You are encouraged to participate by posting questions to the presenters by clicking the blue hand icon on the top right corner of your screen. All questions will be answered throughout the presentation. We also encourage you to complete the feedback survey by clicking on the yellow icon also located in the top right corner of your screen. If you're experiencing difficulty hearing the sound during the webinar, please dial the 1-800 support number listed at the bottom of the screen. I'd now like to pass you over to Vandana to begin. Thank you, Lennon. Um, it's great to have you all join us today, and um, so welcome. Welcome to the session on the Pharmacist Shared Medicines List, also known as the PSML, which is a new clinical document that will be available through the My Health Record. But what this also does is showcases that commitment and the continuous evolution of the My Health Record and ensure we've got a, a rich national source of data for clinicians and consumers when they need it the most. So my name is Vandana and I'm joined by Kate Ellis. We're both pharmacists by trade and educators at the Australian Digital Health Agency. I'd like to begin with, a, with an acknowledgement to the country. So we'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the country throughout Australia and their continuing connection to land, sea and community. We pay our respects to them and their cultures and to elders both past and present. So the purpose of this session today is to provide you with an overview of the, the PSML and the sources that may be used to create that document. So essentially we'll go through the development and the supporting functionality that's currently available. Uh, we'll highlight some key differences between the PSML and the various other medicine sources. Kate will also step through some PSML use cases and how healthcare providers can access um, the, the new document through the, my, through the, through the clinical um, information system. And finally, we have allowed ample time for Q&A, so please um, send us your question as we move along and we will take a uh, break in between and respond to your queries. So finally, note a recording of this webinar along with the slides will be circulated to everyone online within a few weeks. So let's begin with a couple of questions. Renan, can we please have the first question up? So I guess that the first question, uh, what we'd like to sort of gauge, uh, and as you can see from the options, um, is who do we have joining us from across the country? Just an indication so we can um, tailor some of the information and ensure it is relevant to your practice. And it's great to see people um, completing that question. So I can see we've got a few um, hospital staff, Great to see some community pharmacy, consultant, uh, pharmacists too might be doing, uh, providing services like your HMR or RMMR. We've got general practice staff and of course a number of other colleagues joining from other organisations. So I'll just give everyone um, maybe a few more, maybe a minute or so to respond to the question and then we'll move on to the next one. Okay, so I can see we've got a great mix within the audience today, which is fantastic. Redback, can we please have the second question up? And there might be just a few seconds uh, delay with the second question, so please bear with us. So hopefully you can see the second question, uh, which is about have you heard about the PSML? Had you heard about the PSML prior to this webinar? Um, so what we're really looking for is uh, prior to seeing maybe a flyer from your primary health network or, or from your colleagues or really any other media, uh, 
had you heard about the My Health Record System and again, sorry, the PSML. And again, it's fantastic to see that uh, we've got more than 50% who are familiar with the, with the PSML. So that's fantastic. Thank you all for your responses. So I will um, start with a really brief overview of the, um, the Australian Digital Health Agency. So we are the system operator of My Health Record, and essentially the agency was established with a vision to improve health outcomes for all Australians through the delivery of digital healthcare system and the national digital health strategy. And we want to ensure there is a robust healthcare system that is supported by um, technology and systems such as the My Health Record. So moving on to the national digital health strategy, which I'm sure majority of you online would be familiar with um, the strategy we have in place, which is a four-year plan that prioritizes initiatives under the seven key pillars you see on the slide. Um, and as you may know, there is significant work currently underway across those pillars. But considering our discussion today, I just wanted to draw your attention to a couple initiatives. Um, so the Medicines Safety Initiative, now essentially that aims at um, establishing a nationally coordinated digital medicines blueprint. So that is to map out and ensure the agency has an understanding of the different projects and initiatives that we need to deliver on along with our um, partners and uh, achieve the objectives of the strategy. So medicine safety, of course, um, is recognized as a key priority by a number of organizations and the government. And last week, um, over the, there was over the weekend, I attended the PSA conference where um, Health Minister Greg Hunt reaffirmed that the, uh, the government is committed uh, to the Medicines Safety Initiative and will look into addressing the, the issue of medicine-related harm. So it was very reassuring. But currently, uh, projects that you may be interested in that are underway is um, electronic prescription. So that essentially will enable prescribing and dispensing and claiming of medicines directly from an electronic prescription. And the other project is sort of relates to the PSML, which we will um, go into uh, shortly. So what is a PSML? Now, PSML is a curated list of all of the medicines the patient may be using at a point in time. And what it may include is all of the prescription and non-prescription medicines. But additionally, it may also highlight the, um, the over-the-counter medicines the patient may be using or complementary medicines such as vitamins and herbal medicines. Um, in terms of, I guess, medicine-related problems, you may all be familiar with, I guess, uh, the, the issues, and there's plenty of evidence out there. But most likely, medicine-related problems are likely to occur during transition of care. And there are multiple factors that may be contributing to medicine-related problems. But we know that the two most significant factors are gaps in communication and time delays in being able to access that information. So that's where the PSMO, along with all of the medicines information, is an extremely important document and will help potentially reduce medication errors. So finally, it's also important to note that the PSMO may be an important outcome from a medicines reconciliation, which could be done in a range of settings, whether that's a hospital or a pharmacy. But it will also provide a very useful resource for future medicines reconciliation. So let's go into um, some of the information sources um, that pharmacists may use to develop a PSML. So on this slide, as you can see, we've listed the four most common sources. Um, and that might be a hospital discharge medicines list. So to put that in perspective, it may be a hospital-based pharmacist who would review the discharge medicines list, compare it with all of the information they might have access to within the hospital, and that might be the inpatient medication chart, 
Uh, the patient may have brought in some, I guess, medicines, but all of that information and then curate a list and upload that to the individual's My Health record. Or in a community setting, it might be medicines history that the consumer provides to their pharmacist. So um, in that, I guess, example, the pharmacist will have a discussion with the patient about all of the medicines they might be using, collect information they have um, available, and send that to the My Health record. Likewise, it could be um, a dose administration Med aid medicines list, also known as DAA. And so for those of you online, um, a number of pharmacies, who might not be aware, a number of pharmacies um, do pack Webster's or DAA's, and they currently create a medicines list. So as part of their existing workflow, those pharmacies can choose to then upload uh, a PSML, but ensure that they are, um, they're including all of the information or sort of uh, all of the medicines the patient is actually taking and not just the ones that are being packed in the webster. And Vanzina, I might just jump in there. We've just got a couple of comments from people in the audience about um, not being able to see the slides um, moving through. I can see them on my end. Um, Renan from Redback, can you please confirm that all of the audience can see the slides as they're moving through? Uh, yes, it's, on, it's fine on my end, but I'll do what I can. Thanks, Kate. Thanks, thanks, Vandana. You're good to go. Wonderful. Um, so, look, finally, uh, it might be a ph pharmacist um, conducting or providing a professional service like uh, a HMR or maybe a service in store, and as part of that process, um, they could put together a pharmacist shared medicines list, review all of the medicines the patient is actually taking, and send that up to the My Health record. So on that slide, it's very important to then note that it is only a pharmacist that can authorize the upload uh, of a PSML to the My Health record, as you get lots of questions about, I guess, um, uh, who can upload that to the My Health record. So moving on to the benefits of the PSML, and I've touched on some of these benefits um, earlier, but essentially PSML is a tool to support clinicians with patient-centered care and also improve that information sharing between healthcare providers involved. Now certainly in the context of an individual where they've got multiple chronic conditions, um, they're working with a range of healthcare providers, um, a, a, a curated medicines list would mean that all of the healthcare providers are on the same page about what that patient might be taking at a point in time. Um, and PSML supplements other medicines information. So um, there is, as you may be aware, and Kate will go through the details as to all of the other medicines information and, and uh, what's available. But really, it supplements that. But what it does is it provides additional um, information like the non-prescription, over-the-counter, or complementary medicines the patient is actually taking. But finally, and more importantly, from a patient perspective, the PSML means that the consumer has a consolidated record of all of the medicines they are taking. They don't have to remember the intricate details about what that might be, and that has the potential to reduce whether it's medication interactions or just duplication of medicines they might be taking. So that's where the medicines information has a role to play. So we've got a couple slides just to give you a flavor on what does a PSML look like currently. So um, on your screen, what you can see is just two examples of um, a PSML from Webster Care and HPS pharmacies. And uh, so they are, these are PDF documents, draft, uh, I guess, uh, templates, so they are likely to change in future. But typically what these documents will include is uh, information about the medicine itself, directions, um, start or end date, and potentially the status, just highlighting whether it's the current medication or, um, or perhaps it has been ceased. 
So as you can see, the information is quite similar, but it's more the look and feel and how the information is presented in the document. Likewise, we've got an example for um, Fred Medview, which includes similar information, and that is, again, just a sample, so more um, a draft which may change in, in future. So I just wanted to cover a question I guess we get from healthcare providers about when will I start seeing PSMLs. So um, for everyone online, the, um, the document itself and the supporting functionality, that's available. So the agency has built on that functionality. And essentially we've got Webster Care, Fred Medview and HBS teams that are working, they're working at their end to sort of uh, build that functionality, allow pharmacists to get connected to the My Health Record system. And once they are, they will start to upload PSML. And we're working very closely with the three vendors um, and expecting to have um, the functionality in place in the next one to two months. So you will soon start to see PSMLs um, for your patients. So uh, in terms of providers um, and viewing the PSML, Kate will go through the details and how you can, uh, I guess, access that. But absolutely, that is possible as well. You will be able to see uh, the document through different systems. So um, finally, the PSML is being rolled out in two phases. So the first phase uh, will involve just uploading an the PSML as a PDF document. We've just um, shown you some screenshots. But the second stage, uh, which the agency is working on currently, will have, um, I guess, a structured template. And, um, and that is expected to be sort of rolled out over the next year. And I've just got an example for what the PSML may um, look like as part of that stage to release. So to give you a flavor, it will have some, in, it'll have information on allergies and adverse reactions, um, all of the, I guess, details about the current medicines and will specify the seized medicines. So we've had a lot of input from uh, organizations across uh, in the design of um, this document. So look, I will pause there and see if there are any questions. Thanks, Fandana. Um, and just uh, for the people on the line, there was a couple of people that mentioned that they couldn't see the slides moving through. Just as a bit of a tip, you can refresh the screen. Um, in the top right-hand corner, there should be a refresh button, and that seems to be helping a couple of people with those slides, but they, I've checked with Redback, and they should be displaying for everyone now, but please don't hesitate to let us know if you're having any more issues. Um, and to keep asking those questions as well. So we do have a couple that have come through Vandana, so I'll just answer to the first one. So the question was, um, does the pharmacist notify anyone else that a PSML has been uploaded or noted on the discharge summary? So I guess with My Health Record, when you're uploading documents to the My Health Record system, you don't necessarily actually have to make an additional communication elsewhere to let someone know that you've uploaded the document to the My Health Record system. Um, certainly it can be a good idea to note in a discharge summary that uh, a PSML has been uploaded if um, where you work actually has that functionality available and it can be a courtesy as well because um, certainly sometimes if a patient was admitted to hospital and they may um, call the local GP and say, look, we need a bit more information about this patient, sometimes the GP literally says to the hospital, well, actually have a look on the My Health record and that all the information that you need is available for you. So um, you shouldn't need to be able to notify anyone else, but it certainly can be a nice um, courtesy if you wanted to notify on the discharge summary that, so it can be flagged there. Um, another question is, can we upload the medication history record, MHRR or MMP, created on admission? So that's actually a really interesting question because I guess um, some of the hospital departments do like an admission medication list um, as opposed or uh, as well as a discharge medication list. So. At this stage, I don't believe that that's in scope in terms of having that um, admission medication list uploaded to the My Health Record system. It's more so, um, more likely to be the discharge.
discharge medicine list uploaded. But then again, um, it depending on your jurisdiction or which hospital specifically you work in, and also the I guess the policies of the hospital that you work in, that could be something that you look into and you could find value in doing it that way. But in the first instance, we do normally recommend it as at the discharge list because that means that, that hospital admission has been completed and the discharge medicines list would be more up to date than the admissions list. But that's a great question and something that um, we can talk to further. Um, and we do have another question, uh, which is, is there reimbursement for a pharmacist to upload a PSML? Which is another good question. So um, currently, no, there is not reimbursement available for pharmacists to upload a PSML. But as I'll show you a little bit later in this webinar, it's actually a relatively simple process to be able to upload a PSML from the pharmacist perspective. Um, it can be basically an automated process or just a, a prompt process and a click of a button. So similar to way in the way that pharmacists interact with the My Health Record system at the moment with their dispense records, it actually doesn't really change our workflow that much. We basically dispense our scripts the normal the way that we would, you know, pop our initials in the end, press enter, process and save. And that's that basically will go up to the My Health Record within seconds to minutes. So um, it's not a, an additional kind of burden on the pharmacist workflow and in that way it can be quite an advantage um, in that way for the PSML. So um, we've had a few questions there, but um, I'll just give it a couple more seconds to see if anyone else wanted to ask any more questions. The questions, um, Bart, in the top right-hand corner, I think there's a little blue hand. Um, if you do have any more questions, please feel free to type them in there, and um, we can continue to uh, go through the rest of the webinar slides, and there'll certainly be time at the end to go through a few more of those answers. So without further ado, I'll kick off to the next section um, on what medicines information is actually available in the My Health Records. So we've mostly been talking about um, the pharmacist shared medicines list today, which is what the webinar is on, but I also wanted to put in context for you um, what other medicines information is available in the My Health Records system because there's actually quite a lot of other medicines information that's available in the My Health Records system, which really, if anything, highlights the need um, to make sure that we have as much information as possible. So the first of which of the medicines information available is the dispense record. So I just kind of alluded to that. Um, pharmacies are dispensing prescriptions every day. They put them through their dispense software. They put their initials into the end. And that gets uploaded to the My Health Records system, which is fantastic. And especially over the last 12 to 18 months, the number of pharmacies that are registered with the My Health Records system has astronomically increased. Uh, we're well above 85% um, of community pharmacies registered for the My Health Records system currently across the whole country, which means that there are thousands of uh, dispense records getting uploaded every single day to the My Health Record, which is great. Uh, uh, we've also got prescription records or prescribing records, so that's the actual prescriber of the drug, so usually the, the GP or the specialist or the actual prescriber, and that gets uploaded to the My Health Record. We've also got the, the PDS or Medicare information, so that's the pharmaceutical benefit scheme. So that that information actually gets uploaded through the Department of Human Services if the medicine was covered by the PBS. So very, very roughly that may account for 60 to 70 percent of prescriptions dispensed in the country, but doesn't necessarily account for all of the prescriptions dispensed. So there might be, you know, 30 or 40 percent which are private or over-the-counter type prescriptions. So in those cases, they won't get uploaded by the Department of Human Services. And having this information available by PBS was really quite important um, a number of years ago when we didn't have as many community pharmacies uploading. But now we do have a lot more community pharmacies and other providers on board. Um, that information is quite quite rich and a lot, um, a lot better, the dispense records, as opposed to PBS. But it's still good to have them available where you can. Then we've also got shared health summaries. So they're usually uploaded by the person's nominated healthcare provider, so the GP, RN, or Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander healthcare practitioner. And that contains medicines information as well. You've then also got discharge summaries from the hospital having medicines information. You can have event summaries from health, um, uh, healthcare providers, such as allied health specialists, um, other healthcare providers. 
And then you've also got the personal health summary, and that's actually medicines or allergies information that is entered by the patient. So what I mean by that is the patient themselves um, can actually go into their My Health record and enter what medicines they might take, for example, over the counter or any allergies they might have, and pop that into their My Health record. And to try to draw all of this together, essentially what I'm saying is the pharmacist shared medicines list is the one down the bottom there, and that, that also contributes to our medicines information that's available in the My Health record. So you're probably thinking, wow, that is a lot of things to look at. If all I want to know is what medicines does my patient take, if you look at the slide here on the medicines view, the medicines view is actually a, a, a view, a tab that's available in the My Health Record system that literally consolidates all of those different medicines information that I was just talking about. So it actually consolidates, you know, the latest discharge summary, the latest shared health summary, you know, prescription records, dispense records, all in one view. So if you actually click on that medicine preview tab, you can see all of the different healthcare providers, what they think the patient is on, and then you can basically go through that list and reconcile, okay, well, the, the GP thinks that the patient's on this, I can see that the pharmacist shared medicines list thinks that the patient's on this, you know, let's get the story straight and actually see what this patient is taking. So that can be a really, really useful tool um, to actually be able to do a medicines reconciliation. And you can see in the little yellow box there that I've got a um, PSML link, and that's certainly um, the link to open up the pharmacist shared medicines list uh, in a PDF view at the moment, as Vans and I was talking about earlier. So just to kind of reiterate, just to got a bit of a table here about the difference between the pharmacist shared medicines list and the medicines view. So on the left hand side, focus your attention on the pharmacist shared medicines list. So it's a list that the pharmacist uploads um, based on what the consumer was known to be taking at the time. So pharmacists in their everyday practice actually create these kind of lists all the time. It may not have been known as a pharmacist shared medicines list previously, it might be known as a med profile or a dose administration aid or a packing profile. There's a number of different ways you could call it, but that's essentially what it is. So for a lot of pharmacists, we actually already put in a lot of hard work to create these documents, but you know, besides maybe printing it off and popping it onto the pack or you might, you know, have sent it to the GP in the past or maybe given a, a, you know, a hard printed copy to the patient, it may not have gone anywhere else. Whereas now, it would be fantastic that we can actually start to upload this valuable document into the My Health Record so we know that if a hospital pharmacist wants to view it, they can actually see, oh wow, this person has a DAA or a Webster pack and they can actually look at, well, what is the most current version of this? Um, so that's the pharmacist shared medicines list in comparison to the medicines view on the right hand side which was that that curated kind of um, dynamic view of documents that I was just talking about in the last slide. So that's going to consolidate uh, the PSML, uh, prescription records, dispense records, discharge summary, share summaries all in one view. So the PSML is found inside the medicines view, if that makes sense. So ho hopefully that kind of clarifies the way that the medicines information works within the My Health Record system. And as Vanden have touched on as well, even Greg Hunt has indicated that, you know, the My Health Record and, and certainly medicines information and medicine safety is a priority for us. Um, it's part of our national digital health strategy and it's something that we really want to work towards and eliminate as many errors as we possibly can because you can see that organizations working in silos, you've not got GPs thinking the patient's on something, the pharmacy thinks they're on something, the hospital thinks they're on something else, that's when errors start occurring. And so we're trying to give as much information as possible um, to the healthcare provider and the patient to help alleviate any concerns. So what I'm actually going to go through now are a few pharmacist shared medicines list use case examples. So um, I'm actually going to give you a couple of user stories from different perspectives. Um, the first of which will be from the pharmacist perspective. I'll be giving a couple of perspectives from clinicians, so other healthcare providers or practitioners that might be using a provider portal and or uh, their own clinical information system. And finally, the actual consumer themselves or the patient themselves and what they can see in their My Health record. So the first story that I've got there is actually the um, pharmacist story. So this is just a, a very quick snapshot of what a pharmacist using Webster Care might might find if they're going to be uploading a pharmacist shared medicines list. So for this particular pharmacist, they're going to go into their patient's record, which is Dorothy O'Sullivan. 
you can see at the very, very bottom there of that screenshot, they've got their IHI number connected. So that means that the pharmacy, you know, is registered for the My Health Record system. They've got their key identifiers for the patient. So they've got their IHI matched correctly. And then you can see in that red circle that I've got there, um, there's a few options, auto upload, prompt to upload or disable upload. I can see that auto upload is the default option in that particular case. And so it really means that once the pharmacist is happy, they've curated the medicines list, they've um, approved it as the pharmacist, and once that document has been finalised, that can basically get uploaded to the My Health Record system. And it really won't um, affect their workflow or take too much more, if any, more time for the actual pharmacist to complete that. But it will mean that if that particular patient does go to hospital, maybe they go to a different pharmacy or a new GP, they will be able to now see that most up-to-date list and it could save a phone call for the pharmacist or save a fax or whatever you use um, to get that information later down the track. So it certainly could be a time saver mechanism in those kind of cases. The second example I've got of for the pharmacist is actually if a pharmacist wants to view a person's My Health Records um, PSML. So in this particular case, the pharmacist uses Fred Dispense. So on the left-hand side there, they're in the My Health Records screen for Fred Dispense, and you can see that they've highlighted um, the pharmacist shared medicines list document because they're looking in the clinical documents list for the patient. The patient has a number of different documents available. But this pharmacist wants to really look at the latest PSML. So they've highlighted that particular document. And on the right-hand side of this screen, you can see that um, the Happy Pharmacy has uploaded one. And in that red box there, that's where you will click to download that PDF of the pharmacist shared medicines list. And that PDF is going to look similar to those um, examples that Vandana had showed you a little bit earlier on. Um, then we've got um, the next slide here. So basically, as a um, well, as a practitioner, I use the national provider portal, and I would like to view my patient's PSML. So this practitioner it could be a GP, it could be an accredited pharmacist, it could be an allied health professional, it could be a specialist. So really, anyone who is using the national provider portal and they'd like to view the patient's PSML, they would basically go down to the clinical documents list, and um, that's what they would be accessing um, to see the pharmacist shared medicines list. Um, so you can see that circled there. And then on the right-hand side, you can see the pharmacist shared medicines list is available in a PDF version of that particular document. So that's how, that, how they can access it. And then I have another example here, again, of a practitioner. So this would more likely be potentially a GP or maybe a specialist who uses a medical director software. So this is just an example of what it might look like. It may, may not be exactly what it will look like in the clinical information system. But essentially, they've gone into their documents list. They've filtered through. They've found the pharmacist shared medicines list. And you can see down the bottom there, the Happy Pharmacy, they've got that link again for the pharmacist shared medicines list available as well. So the Australian Digital Health Agency has distributed the implementation guidance to all of the developers on how to configure their systems to incorporate PSML uh, about a month ago or more. So um, certainly all of the software developers are working on those release schedules. So if you're, if you're not sure whether your particular software developer um, has that functionality or has that update available, please contact them directly and they'll be able to point you in the right direction. But I think the most important thing I kind of wanted to get out was that um, as a practitioner, so as long as you can see the My Health Record Medicines view, which I spoke about a little bit earlier, so that Medicines view is the consolidation of all of the different types of medicines information, you know, dispense records, prescription records, discharge summaries, and the PSML. As long as your current clinical software can see the medicines view, you will be able to see a PSML if the pharmacist has uploaded one. So if you're not sure, go to the medicines view tab and you'll be able to see all of the medicines information, including the PSML, once the pharmacist has actually uploaded that documentation. So um, it's certainly a very, very useful document for you to refer back to. And finally, last but not least, I'd like to um, go through a quick version of the consumer story. So certainly, as a reminder, consumers certainly can see the pharmacist shared medicines list because they can see what clinical documents are available in their My Health Records system. 
So this example here on the left hand side, our patient has gone into their consumer portal at home through MyGov and they've gone, they've clicked onto their clinical records and they're going to click on the pharmacist shared medicines list. So they've clicked on that particular tab and then you can see on the right hand side there, they can actually see all of the pharmacist shared medicines list that are available for the consumer to view. So this can be certainly really handy um, from the consumer perspective because Otherwise, they, um, you know, they might have a printed copy from you or a printed copy from the pharmacy. But other than that, they may not have been able to see that particular information. They may not know about it. Um, but now it really gives the consumer a lot more control and it can help to improve their health literacy as well to actually have that information available to them and feel like they're more in power, more in control. They know what medicines are in their pack. They know what they're taking. Um, it, it really is, is great for them as well. And also for any loved ones, um, particularly if maybe be they have an enduring power of attorney, maybe they're in a nursing home, that kind of thing. It can be helpful for the friends and family of the loved one to actually be able to have access to that information too where appropriate. So what's next for PSML? So I guess I just wanted to um, reiterate, as a healthcare provider, how should I be best utilising the PSML? So firstly, from a pharmacist perspective, when, when am I going to be uploading this particular document? So it could be when you've just finished um, a dose administration aid for a patient, you've just updated their medication profile, you know that everything is accurate and up to date, you've included all of the um, any of the vitamins they might be on, you've made sure that you've listed in there whether they're taking any puffers or they use any patches or anything like that. Um, that can be a time when you could upload that document. Um, again, if you're doing a medication profile for a nursing home, which um, I know in my pharmacy we do a lot of nursing home profiles, it's something that you do every day on an everyday basis and they can change quite, uh, quite quickly. Um, that could be another a cue for you to be uploading those for the nursing home resident because then if that resident goes into the hospital and they need to know what the person is taking, Sometimes, you know, paper records, things can get lost in the ambulance. It's certainly happened before a number of times. Um, they may not even know which pharmacy to call, but if you've got that list up there, that will really help them clarify that information. And finally, um, a discharge summary medicines list is another good example of when to upload a PSML. In terms of when to view the document, um, are the other healthcare providers? So certainly when you require a medicines list for a new admission into hospital, um, that, that's one of the first things that needs to be done. Um, often that can be a hospital pharmacist that's doing that, but there are other um, nurses and doctors that actually have that kind of capability as well and they may be looking into that. Maybe if there's a patient that's new to your practice, you need to reconcile their medicines information can be another example of that. And also it could be when you need to determine who is the packing pharmacy for a patient that uses dose administration aid or um, goes to a residential aged care facility. So there's a number of ways in which you can utilise the PSML both to upload and to view um, and it, it's really going to be an excellent document moving forward. So in terms of uh, further information and resources, so there is actually a PSML web page available um, for healthcare providers. So I've provided the link here and as Vandana said, everyone will get a copy of these slides and a link to the recording as well um, as long as you've registered for the webinar. So we will provide in that in the couple of, next couple of weeks. We've also got PSML pages for consumers as well, so because patients want to know, they might say, oh, what's this document, or I haven't seen this before, um, certainly can direct them to our web page or our help guide for more information. And um, also, we'll always have future webinars and events um, on PSML and also medicines information in general, um, or education really to do with the My Health Record system will be on our webinars and events page. So please feel free to visit that, register for any more education activities that you want. And as I mentioned earlier, please also contact your software vendor for further information as well, and they can help point you into the right direction if you're wanting to um, know which functionality is available for you and where to kind of get started in that way. So on that note, Vans, now I will hand back to you and just check to see if there's any questions, please. Thank you, Kate. Yes, we do have a, a few questions. So um, uh, I'll sort of respond to a few of those. Now, the first question we have is, is there an option for patients where English is not their first language? So um, assuming it's more about you know, healthcare providers being able to upload, and uh, yes, that absolutely is still the case, but 
uh, whether that would be available in different languages. Well, currently, no. It is not going to be available in other, I guess, um, uh, if it will not be translated. But I think more importantly, for this group where English is their second language, they may not be really articulate um, everything. They might have carers with them who may be able to provide information. So I personally think for this particular group, uh, the PSML will play a big role where, uh, where possible, um, uh, you might want to consider uh, getting that information from all of the other sources and sending that information to help to their My Health record. Because whether that's in case of an emergency or where they are traveling, they might not be able to articulate. But more importantly, I think most people forget information about their medicines. So absolutely for this group, it will be um, very important. The next question we have is, uh, once uploaded, can a PSML be removed or updated? So I guess there's a couple of options here. Um, one, a healthcare provider, so the author of that clinical document. So like all of the other clinical documents, the, the pharmacist actually authoring that clinical document can certainly update. Um, can update a, a PSML, but more importantly, the consumer can also um, remove a, a document from their My Health record. So if the consumer believes that the information, let's say, is not uh, accurate or does not reflect all of their, uh, their medicines at that point in time, then certainly there is a functionality or mechanisms built in that will allow the consumer to remove their PSML. But bear in mind, what the consumer cannot do is they cannot go into that PDF um, document, edit that document, and re-upload to their My Health record. So, um, and finally, I guess on that note, just bear in mind all of the other healthcare providers who are perhaps using that document. So, if a pharmacist has also the PSML, um, the GP might be viewing it, but what they can do is certainly if there are any discrepancies, they may uh, let the, the pharmacist know, but they cannot remove that document from the software um, they're using. The next question I have is, is there an intent for the document to be live um, updated or will it be a static update in the form of a PDF? And I think uh, Kate, you've touched on this question. So essentially um, uh, the PSML is uh, a part of stage one. It is a PDF or a static document that will be uploaded even as part of stage two like all of the other clinical documents. Um, it, it will sort of be a, a static document, whereas if you are looking for dynamic information about medicines that gets uploaded in real time, what I'd be sort of looking at is the medicines view, because as Kate said earlier, that is where all of the, um, I guess it's a, it's a dynamic view, but it will pull information in real time from all of the documents um, that are available that include medicines information within the My Health record. Um, we've got the next question we have is, does the second phase of the PSML require medications to be uploaded directly onto the My Health record for the patient? So the, I guess, more like your phase one, as part of phase two, what pharmacists will be expected is actively create uh, a PSML and send that to the My Health record. So like how, I guess, um, uh, pharmacies send dispense data and that happens by default, well, that will not happen for the PSML. The pharmacist would have to actively create that document and as part of that we've talked about um, having that discussion with the patient, whether it's a, a dose of administration aid or providing a service, it's about having that discussion with the patient. Make sure you've got all of the, I guess, medicines information it is current and up to date and send that to the My Health record. Okay, we've got a few more questions. Um, the next one we have is, will the PSML list support both PDF and CDA? And that's a really good question. So um, 
That's right. As part of stage one, it is a PDF document. But the stage two that the agency is currently working on is to support that uh, that CDA. So that's absolutely um, coming. It is in progress. Um, all right. Moving on. Um, do you, do you need? Me to... Sure, Kate. Yeah. I can take a couple if you like, Vandana. Um, yeah, it's great to see so many questions. I have to say, definitely. So uh, the next question is. Do you need Fred to generate these lists or what software do you need? So as Vendor was saying earlier, there are three software vendors that are currently um, implementing the PSML functionality in terms of the upload aspect. So Fred Medview, if you have that add-on for Fred, so Fred Medview is one of them. Webster Care is another one and also HPS Pharmacy is undergoing this implementation as well. So if you use those software, please have a chat to your software vendor and they can help you get um, dialed up while they're through this particular phase. Um, they can have a chat to you a little bit further in depth about those specific cases. Um, so we do have another question as well. Um, is MPS coming on board? So at this at this stage, they're not one of the three early adopters. However, I would recommend if your pharmacy uses MPS and you're keen to get on board, please contact MPS directly. We're very happy at the Australian Digital Health Agency to work with them to help um, implement PSML for them. And we've already received a number of inquiries about it from various vendors um, within Australia. So as a customer, I would highly recommend you get in touch with MPS and um, encourage them and let them know that you're keen to get started. Similarly, I have another question about are you working with best practice uh, for PSML and um, yes, we certainly are. We have sent them through the implementation guidance to all the developers. So in terms of best practice, um, they won't be able to upload a PSML um, because PSMLs are uploaded by uh, primarily pharmacists. However, best practice, um, hopefully very shortly, will be able to um, view the PSMLs by the document list, but they should already be able to view PSML by the medicines view. Um, as long as the PSML has been uploaded by the pharmacist. So yes, we do work quite closely with best practice. Um, so a couple more, there's actually quite a few more questions. So uh, the next one is, is this a static PDF? Is the agency working with healthcare software platforms so that meds list meds checks will fill in the preferred format? Another great question, and again, we do work with a number of um, like more of the professional services software I'm guessing you're referring to, maybe MedAdvisor or Guildcare, things like that. Um, yes, we have certainly um, worked with those particular vendors um, in the past or, or touched base with them. So as I would always recommend as a customer of that particular software, if you feel um, that you're particularly keen for PSML or you'd like to improvements to your functionality of your software vendor, as, your, as the customer, please get in touch with that software vendor directly and kind of advocate for it and let them know that they're interested and absolutely they um, always uh, can reach out to us and we can reach out to them as well. Um, so another question is, um, if there are two or more uploads, can we see who has uploaded the document to reconcile any differences between the two lists? So the answer, um, I believe, to that is yes. So because the PSML is its own document, um, you know, a PSML may change from one day to the next day, to be quite honest. Um, so you should be able to see both of those particular documents that were uploaded, and you can see any differences between the two. Uh, but certainly, um, the, I guess the idea is that the most recent version of the PSML, the most up-to-date version of the PSML should be the one with the most current date. The most recent date should always be the one that you're looking at. But if you wanted to go back in time and kind of see um, was there a discrepancy or what's, what's the story here, then that should be an option available to you to see the difference in the times. Okay. Um, let's go through a couple more questions. Um, how do you upload DAA info to the My Health record? So again, that would depend on your software vendor. So um, I would contact, in the first instance, Fred Medview, Webster Care, or HPS if you're using any of those three early adopters. Otherwise, contact your software vendor for more information. Um, I think there was a question down here about wanting to go through one of the user cases again, user story 1.3. So I'm just going to go 
back into the slide again. Uh, Story 1.3. So this is the table here of um, when a healthcare provider should best utilise the, the PSML, so from a pharmacist perspective and also from a healthcare provider perspective. So for that particular person, I'll just leave it on that slide so you can see. Um, Vance, and I'll just check whether there any other questions that you wanted to go through. Um, yes, Kate, there's probably a couple. I'm just conscious of time, but we'll go mm. through maybe a couple. And the remaining questions, uh, we'll have a list of those. So we'll get back to you with the ones that we haven't been able to, to respond. Um, and I guess some of these we've clarified, but there is one on, um, uh, there is one on, sorry, it's just, missed it. Uh, it was more about a template to upload Webster Pack medications. So is there a template to upload Webster, Webster Pack medications to my health record or should this be available via the dispensing program? So, um, and we've got probably quite a few questions about how to upload and what's currently available. So just to, I guess, clarify, as part of stage one, and that's what we're working on, um, Webster Care, HBS and Fred Medview um, they've sort of got their own template, slightly different as we had, like we showed you the screenshots earlier. So the look and feel is slightly different, but they've got the own, their, their sort of um, own templates in place. And that's really based on what they're um, sort of um, using currently. So as part of stage one, yes, it is um, the template that's already in place. And that's what we're hoping to standardize in stage two. And more importantly for everyone, so um, whether it's um, a pharmacy or really all of the other healthcare provider organisation, there's a few questions about just viewing. So really important that organisations are connected to the My Health Records system, um, but certainly for pharmacists. Yes, you will need to make sure that they are connected. Um, the software needs to have the capability to actually create and send that to the individual's My Health record. So, of course, over the, as Kate said, um, the agency is working very closely with not just um, general practice, I guess, um, systems, but all of the other software. So progressively, um, we will sort of have more and more softwares that will include the functionality and you will be able to um, uh, upload a My Health record. So I think I will leave it there, Kate. Is there anything else? Just a couple more questions while we've got a couple more minutes. Um, one of the, the questions was, can health professionals other than pharmacists view the PSML? Absolutely, yes. So all healthcare providers that are registered for the My Health Record system and can view the My Health Record can view a PSML as long as it's been uploaded. So if it's in the My Health Record, you're registered, you're a provi healthcare provider providing healthcare to the individual, yes, you can view a PSML. It's not just for pharmacists, it's for he all healthcare providers and the consumer as well. Another person just asked, if dispensary records are auto-uploaded, what is the value of the PSML? I just wanted to answer this question because it's, it's quite an important point. So dispense records, yes, are automatically uploaded to my health record, which is extremely important. But remember that patients don't only take prescription medicines. They might actually take things that they buy over the counter, like a box of Panadol Osteo, or they might go to the supermarket and buy some Nurofen, or they might um, take a number of herbs and vitamins that they get from the complementary medicine store, or they might take vitamin D capsules that they don't need a prescription for. So there's quite a number of medicines that people actually take that they may not get dispensed and they may not get a prescription for. But in those cases, it's actually very important that the pharmacist knows that they're taking these complementary medicines or over-the-counter items, and it's important that the other healthcare providers know about it as well. So particularly if you're you know, doing a PSML in the pharmacy, I know when I'm packing my dose administration aids, I need to know what other medicines the person is taking. If I'm packing the vitamin D capsules in my pack, even though I haven't dispensed a script for them, it's very important that I have that listed in my medication profile. So I hope, hope that ha helps to answer that um, kind of clarification there. 
Um, and someone else has just commented, the time consuming part of the PSML would be the creation of the PSML, not the upload. And that's absolutely correct. And the, the point is, pharmacists are already doing these documents. They are already doing medicine profiles and um, Webster Care. They're already doing discharge lists. All of the work is actually already being done by the pharmacist, but up until now, they didn't have anywhere to upload that information to. So the upload is not the difficult part. The creation of the document is the more time consuming part and we're already doing that. So it's just a matter of just flicking the switch to basically get, start to get those uploaded to the My Health record, which is really fantastic. So um, I think that uh, someone else has also asked, does standing consent for the order upload of the PSML via Webster Care apply? Um, so certainly talk to Webster Care directly about the functionality available in that system, but just as a more general comment about the My Health Record system, as long as the patient has a My Health Record and you are the healthcare provider providing healthcare to that particular patient, so you're looking after them, you're doing scripts for them, you're doing their medication profile, you're allowed to upload the uh, PSML to their My Health Record system. You don't explicitly have to ask each and every single time that you do it. If the patient is in front of you, certainly as a courtesy, you can have that conversation with them, but the normal approved standing consent um, model um, still applies to the My Health Record system as discussed before. But just based on time, I, I'm going to have to leave that one there. We've tried to answer as many questions as possible. We do have another webinar tonight as well on PSML, and we'll be providing more information in due course too. I'd like to thank everyone so much for attending. Please um, stay on the line and provide feedback in our survey. Um, and I'd just like to thank you all again for your contributions, and you will receive a copy of the slides and the recording in the next week or two. So thank you for joining us, and I'll hand back to Redback now. Thank you. Thank you to all our speakers for your presentation, and thank you to everyone for attending today's webinar. Please complete our current survey, which you will be redirected to shortly. We thank you in advance for your feedback, and we wish you a great opportunity.